We got a yipper. We got a yipper today. Got the, got the yips. Oh, oh, fat dog. Oh, just put me down. <laughs> fat old dog. Uh, What's up, dudes and dogs? It's us. No, no, com- no single combo. Sorry, dude, dogs, dude, dogs, or nobody or else. Nothing. Hard line. Hard R. On iTunes, oh my God. number one alt right wrestling podcast, the worst year of our lives. Oh, who? What's on? Hold on, guys. Let's see what's on TV. Global. Was it Little House in the Prairie? Yeah, it's Little House in the Prairie. Turn that off. I'm working on. Don't need the distraction. Calm your tits. An Indian man. Hmm. Oh, we'll never know. Uh, that's a cliffhanger to never boop, be. Boop, boop or pow wow. Pow wow. All right. Who are you? Me. Yeah. Drew. Who are you? I'm having a, an existential crisis, so like he's who, Scott. Who, I'm who, Kelly. Who among us even knows who they are even anymore? All right, then, where were we? It's, we're fucking on. It's the worst year of our lives. Yeah, what, what sorry, is? what what city did this nitro take place in? I was actually trying to be on topic. You know what? I don't even remember. Denver. Oh, Denver. it was Denver. Yeah, it Denver. was Denver. Denver. Denver, home of noted Me Tour T.J. Miller. <laughs> um. So this started off interesting, because it started off with a shot outside of the arena. I feel like we didn't do enough preamble. Let's do another 10 minutes. Shut up. <laughs> um, That's what the previous episode was for, when we got right. high in the hose. <laughs> Fine. Um, a red truck pulls up in the parking lot. doesn't park in a parking space. It just <laughs> stops in the middle of the parking lot. Out gets Scott Steiner with, uh, I'm going to say, a, a six-foot pipe. Yeah, a bigger pipe than last week. Yeah. yeah. I hope the trend continues. Yeah. Yells at the cameraman. I hope it's cartoonishly big next week. Yells at the cameraman. Get him away. Cameraman starts to get away. Hits him anyway. But yeah, he's not fast enough and gets hit with a pipe. I mean, it's a big pipe. Yeah. And uh, then it cuts to showing Kevin Nash entering the arena with his uh, Arizona Diamondbacks jersey. Not Randy Johnson, though. It was Not Randy Johnson? It was someone else. It was no one, I don't think. I, don't I think know. it was Wallace was in the back then. Was his name? Mm, Rashid know. Wallace. Did he play for the Diamondbacks? Did it have number 67 on it? No, I think... <laughs> I think it was Nash, 20, Nash is a big 67 guy. 23? As we alluded... That's Michael Jordan, Kelly. Don't be ridiculous. As we alluded to in the previous podcast. Yes. Licking that hip. Gotta lick that hip. Um, and then it shows one Goldberg... Th- this was weird. Goldberg coming into the, the arena as well, asking Duck Dillinger if... Duck Na- Dillinger? Yeah. If he was... Someone uh, called him that once. Yeah, it was Tank. Was That's tank? right. Yeah. Asking him if uh, Nash was there, and he said, yeah. He's like, oh, awesome. And then... Mike awesome. Yep. Yeah. And uh, then that kind of referenced that a little later, but... Uh, yeah. That was kind of... Now, surprisingly, this match did not open with a stupidly long promo when nothing happens. It actually opened with a match. Yeah, I feel like that must yeah, have been... real a, weird. Must yeah. have been some sort of oversight. Yeah. And uh, I believe that... Well, I guess they kind of made up with... Made up for it with that stupid interview uh, yeah. somewhere later in the show, which we'll kind of kind of gl- briefly yeah, which go we'll over. Touch on, yeah, yeah. We'll see what we're talking about. Um, so the first match was the Jung Dragons versus the Carl Young Dragons, yeah, versus Vampiro, uh, Muda, behavioral therapists, and the Demon. Uh, with I believe Tank on commentary, but I don't like was did he what was there even a point to that? I don't think we could hear him really. I don't remember anything Tank said. The reason he was there was because he's gay for three count and three count oh, is fighting the Young Dragons, Dragons at the pay-per-view in a ladder match. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's just there for that. So match starts off, uh, I believe it's Vampiro and Jamie Noble, or, or uh, Jamie-san. Vampiro was wearing black pants. Well, he came out in gear, like what looked like gear. He, yeah. had, he had a girdle on. He took the gear off, <laughs> was just left in black pants that looked exactly like what the Young Dragons are yeah. wearing. Yeah. Except for he's... Way taller than all. He's much yeah. taller and has a white face. And that's uh, racist. Yeah. No, he was just in because the other ones are Asian, and you're like, oh, look at old white face over there <laughs> with his round hey. eyes and his nose that can breathe in the air. It, well, <laughs> well, no, it was clown face. That's even more racist. That's pretty. You can't racist. say that. <laughs> but I just did. Do you want clowns marching on this podcast? Because you said clown face? You are as bad as blackface, Kelly. You Maybe t- worse. We had this guy over here saying it was the number one alt-right hey, podcast. Whatever Scott does on his own time is Scott's It's problem. not Scott. Look at the charts. We are undeniably number one. All right. So. On the charts I post on my website weekly. 
Anyway, those two start off. Uh, there's a sick power bomb to begin. Oh, Vampiro blasts Noble. Yeah, it was like a, it was pretty much an awesome bomb. He hucks him. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he great. takes, and then um, the bumps real high on his shoulders. Yeah, like, real high. I don't even remember. Not the highest shoulder bump on this show, though. No, no not. Um, I don't even remember. I don't even remember how it even got to this point, but at some point. Because Vampiro, like, there's barely any tags in this match. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was just all over the place. It got messy. Yeah. And also, Great Mood is the worst wrestler of the year 2000. Yes. Uh, and one of the best of 2001. Uh, Vampiro goes to the outside. I think, I think he gets bumped to the outside. Um, Jimmy Wang comes off the apron. I think he was going for a Rana, but overshot Yeah, just like Vampiro jumped over. And landed on his feet. Yeah, yeah. But Vampiro still bumped. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Noble came with a... Like, it, it, it was like a, fly, a flying Arabian goggles. Like, his, his balls clipped his forehead or eyes. Yeah. And so ble- he felt the need to bump. And then Noble did a flipping dive off the top to that side to, like... That looked good. Which was good, but, like, we didn't know if anyone was going to catch him at the beginning. Yeah. Um, now, here comes the main focus of this match. <laughs> well, not the main focus, just the highlight, I guess, of this match. Um, so, I guess because they're going to be having a ladder match at the pay-per-view... The Young Dragons decide, we're going to give the audience a taste of what they're going to get at the pay-per-view. So they go, uh, I believe it's Kaz Hayashi and Noble go and grab, no, it's uh, Kaz how about, uh, Yang. How about Kaz Gayashi, and he's just for guys. Sure. Um, they go and grab, I'm going to say the, the largest, largest ladder. The largest ladder oh, it's of so all high. time. So, Way too big for a wrestling ring. Take me through what happens. Um, well, it's the year 2000. We'll, we're still sort of in the infancy of crazy ladder spots. And, like, backyarding things haven't really yeah. shown up on the internet where people do things wrong. Yeah. yeah. There have been, like, three or four major, like, pay-per-view ladder matches ever, so from, like, 94 to now. Um... So I guess people didn't understand, and I guess as a result of that, people didn't understand literally how physics worked yet. Because if you jump off the top of a high ladder, the force that you use to press off the ladder to propel you forward, that force goes into the ladder, because energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Newton's second law of thermodynamics... So that force goes into the ladder and pushes the ladder backwards. Preventing you. Preventing you from jumping forwards and resulting in one Hayashi Kamikaze nearly dying <laughs> as he tried to, I guess, do a splash off the top of the ladder. But he was like, he wasn't standing on like a rung he had and a, then he, jumped He was off standing the on sideways. sideways. He had a foot on either of the Side. second from the top rungs. Yeah. Which is more stable than standing on the top, yeah. to his credit. Yeah. Still not nearly stable enough because he, he went. He jumped. He went face first. He went two feet forward of the ten he needed to go. Mm-hmm. Landed right on his goddamn right face. on his face. And and everyone was, thought he and died. was hurt because yeah. he oh, definitely yeah. didn't move. And he just laid next to Vampiro Clutching and then his face. and then the other yeah. four had to sort of like fix the problems. Yeah. Don't don't worry, dude. It's not like you have to do a ladder match in six days yeah. on pay per view or anything. Yeah. Now. After that, oh, could things get any better? Yes, they yes. could. Because in comes the great Muda, a.k.a. the worst wrestler <laughs> in the year 2000. Uh, just a statue of a man. Like, <laughs> I, that's the only way I can explain it, because every time someone was doing something to him or coming at him off the ropes, he was completely still. Just, like, not feeling it. Just, yeah, just like, eh. And, like, that bald spot on his head. There's a reason he shaves it clean in six months. Yeah, it's like, woof. Um... And somehow that makes him a good wrestler again. I don't yeah. really understand, but it, it, it checks out. Reverse yeah. Samson. Reverse Samson. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Just ugh, just bad. And um, I just the only note I really wrote for Muda was Muda, come on. <laughs> come on, Muda. <laughs> um, he did do a good legging or a legging. Good uh dragon leg screw. And, I, a, a, a leg and screw drag whip. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he did do a moonsault. He gets um, the moonsault really good every moonsault time. Moonsault he can still do. But that's really the only good thing he consistently does at this point. Yeah. Everything else is just like, his mind and his body are one step apart. So <laughs> yeah. his brain knows what he needs to do, but so by just... the time his brain sends it to his body, he's already a step behind. <laughs> yeah, it's too late. Uh, the the demon keeps up his perfect streak of his finisher looking bad every yep. single time Even he hits it. Even on small dudes. Even yeah. on small guys. Like, if Who you can't jump? hit it 
on a tiny Asian man, then it, it's just not going to happen. And, like, and this was like the only thing he did in the match. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't do anything. Yeah. The demon, how about the he-man? And he's just for guys. <laughs> uh, oh, and then from... I, so, I mean, I th- uh, I'm trying to remember the finishes of this. I think it was just... Um, this was your job. You had one job. Right down the finish. That's not my one job. Uh, oh, I think it was... Um, I want to say, say Paint Guys won. Yeah, it, they did. It was because they all hit their finishes is what yeah. it was. Yeah, because Demon hit the love gun. Yeah, like the... the yeah, and the, um, and the moon Oh, it was the moon was the yeah. finish. But, yeah. um, and then Vampiro hit the nail in the coffin right. like, during all that shit. So, yeah, it was the moon salt uh, finish. And then um, they just start beating them up. And then... Uh, Sting comes in to make the save. Yeah. And just starts beating the shit out of the... Because he's got a demon to fight. Yeah, ICP. And he calls out... <laughs> Dark <laughs> Carnival Kelly. Or whatever. And he, starts, uh, and he starts calling out Goldberg because two weeks ago when he had the yeah. burned face, yeah. he was going to wrestle Booker T. You were the only one who remembered that. Yeah. And then... Uh, we're like, why is he mad at Goldberg? <laughs> and Goldberg jumped him and took a spot. And then... Uh, but instead of outcoming Goldberg, because he's there in the building, uh, Steiner comes out instead and attacks Sting with the pipe. And uh, from there we go to commercial. Now, all of Steiner's promo was heard, correct? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> it was, it was heard by the audience. <laughs> As per usual. Live audience. More than 50% of Steiner's promo was bleeps. Yeah. Using terminology that by uh, those standards were not allowed on live television. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so from there we come back. Now the fucking cat is coming out. Dancing along. Uh, well, we've sort of finally decided as a face. Yeah. I guess, yeah, by, by default. Yeah. And uh, he comes out, and he's sick of uh, Steiner and Nash and Goldberg and Sting and that getting all each other's faces and smashing each other and, and disrupting his show because he's in charge of the show, which, like, aren't you in charge of all the shows? Yeah. Like he said, he's, like, taking charge of the, the show. show. We're yeah. like, you're already you're in charge. charge. You're the guy on TV every week making matches. Yeah. What are you doing other days? And fucking Nitro Girls for yeah. like, because they're random sluts. Sure, uh, like in the butt. Dime a dozen. Had a sick burn on Steiner. Called him Big Papa Dump. Got him. <laughs> That's true. Um, there was also a little Mama Pump sign in the audience, which I enjoyed. Oh yeah, that rem- I gotta remember the sign from the main yes. event. <laughs> um, but uh, from there he goes on to book a, because <laughs> Steiner has the pipe, so he's hitting people with pipe, so he's gonna book uh, the the second. Match on a, uh, in a, in a there is a span? there is a match on a pole last week yeah and in six days on the pay per view there is a, another on a pole match and tonight they're gonna have a pipe on a pole match yes which is Steiner's and we weren't thing. sure because normally because like last week was the Viagra on a pole as we alluded to last podcast correct we were not we were not made be we we're not to be made aware ahead of time correct of the rules of the match was it. If you just get it down from the pole, you win? Yeah. Or if you get, you get it, it down, you get to use Cause it. Because, like, the Viagra thing, sure, it makes sense, like, retrieve it, you win, because that's the point of the match. But no. when, when the thing... No, no, no. You take the Viagra, you whoever gets a boner. You take the ma- Viagra, you get a boner. And stab him you with your dick. You can only win the match if you have a boner from the Viagra. And then, like, bend him over and start daggering him? I sure. Think- I think you just I think you just pin him, and then whatever happens after. Is thing in, like, Jamaican clubs? Yeah. Are they still doing that? Probably. Those fucking animals. <laughs> wow. Look, Easy. Anyone Easy. can do it. I'm just saying it's an animalistic thing um, to do. I believe that this one was the same rules. It was, it was but, but, I was but saying, nobody like, said that ahead no, of time. No, and it's weird for a weapon on yeah. a pole match, yeah, yeah. for the match to technically be over yeah. before the weapon is used. Yes. Yeah, I mean, especially when it's something that's being used almost every show. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so that's where we're going to get later on. And then also from uh, there, uh, Lance Storm comes out wearing all the belts. And uh, demands he get... Have they... Did they... Have they renamed the Cruiserweight one yet? The belt was... It had the sticker yeah, on it. It had the sticker. Did they say but what he, it was he, called, though? didn't no. say what yeah. it was called. Because yeah. it, it's named... It's what? The, the, the one, 200... No, 100 one, kilogram? 100 kilo, kilo uh, title. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Along with the and the Saskatchewan Hardcore International title, yeah, which we didn't clue into until the last show when Lance said it, yeah, spells out oh, shit, spells out fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Lance Storm, Zans, he wants his uh, he wants his title match, so he's gonna he wants to wrestle Booker T tonight, which I believe does get booked. Yes, Cat uh, just says okay. 
Yeah, um, there were like wasn't a lot of back and forth on that. Lance is like, here's what I want. Cat's like, you got it. Because what else am I going to do? And from there, we have our second match, which on paper looks like it was going to be fantastic. It's the best possible tag team match of the year 2000 yeah. in WCW. So we got the WCW Tag Champs Chronic taking on the young, daring Bucks. team of the Young Bucks of uh, Sean O'Hare and Mark Jindrak. Best match. I mean, the best match on paper. Paper. The match was whatever. Yeah, the match was... There was the match was probably exactly what we should have expected. Yeah. Sean Hare did a sweet, like, top rope front flip over Brian Adam. Right onto his feet. Right yeah. his like, feet. it was nothing. And then like, hit a, you're too big to do that. We're like, oh, that was really cool. Then he hit a lame super kick. We're like, yeah. that wasn't yeah. so cool. Into the tummy. Um, Brian Clark doing a holy roller. Yeah. Off yeah. the apron. Yeah, what the fuck That was is good. That? Um, Brian Adams... And Brian Adams is jacked. Like, yeah. He's always a big guy, but, like... He he had more body fat when he was Crush. Yeah. Yes, and he's just fucking ripped here. He's yeah. Juice. Yeah, I fuck him. Juiced. Yeah, uh, I fuck anyone named Brian Adams. The hot bold, take. Bold statement. Yeah, and then uh, then then during this, the perfect event came out to do commentary, um, and this is like where it got fucking well stupid and weird because. Um, they go instead of doing like an actual match, they just go to a DK or a DK, a fin- Donkey Kong, finish. Donkey Kong finish, a <laughs> DQ finish. I'm calling them DKs now. <laughs> and uh, from there, Jindrak and O'Hare turn heel and they join with a perfect event. Yeah, and then unnecessary. Well, like, yeah, it wasn't really teased at all. Yeah, even, no. Even last week, they're all faces. They were all fighting each other. So like, yeah. they were exchanging blows. Yep. But then a week later, they're like, "Now nah, we'll we'll team up now." Yeah. I like the way you throw a punch, sir. Yeah. <laughs> we should be friends. <laughs> so then, while Jindrak O'Hare, Palumbo, Stasiak are all ganging up on Chronic, music hits. The Filthy Animals music hits, and we're like. Last we remember, they were heels, but I guess and they, they were, were bolting into the ring. Like yeah, we're like, save. oh, I guess their face is not here to even the numbers. No, they're <laughs> still heels, and they add to the numbers of the now dozens of people beating up Chronic. Yeah, and but then from there, MIA's MIA's music hits, and they come in it's to make the saves. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that yeah, that was kind of that segment, which was a little weird. Yeah, sure. um, remember well, when the, we turned um, paper planes into the Macarena, and it was the best thing we've yes. ever done on this podcast. Um, the Fill the animals steal the tag titles. Oh, yes. That's right. Yeah, they take off with the tag belts. Which starts a show long storyline that goes nowhere? No, the payoff was Major Guns throws Tigress in the mud. All right. Well, that's <laughs> another thing, too. At, this, at the side of the ramp or the entranceway, there's a giant mud pit for. Uh, pigs. Yeah, well, well, technically. I mean, pigs for would go Henry in there. Henry O and Phineas I and, and Fatty A. a. And, the Godwins. Um, and yeah, so there's going to be some... Hog, pig, and beep! <laughs> there's going to be some uh, hot ladies rustling around in there, and everybody likes that, because we're guys. This is what guys like in I the year 2000. I love the presumption by every wrestling promotion forever that A, all of their fans, and B, all of their wrestlers, judging by the way they're like so easily distracted by a woman during a match... Are virgins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever seen tits before. Nope. No one's ever seen a, kissed a girl before. Nope. No one's ever like fingered nope. one while butt fucking the other, like you do on your first time. <laughs> no one's ever French. No one's ever French kissed a tit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I could check that one. <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty good statement. Yeah. I, I sure have French kissed my share of tits. I, you know what? I guess you do. You really. do. You, you do. do. You do really French yeah. kiss them. Yeah. There's a lot of tongue. Yeah. <laughs> so from there, we now we have match number three, which was just another ugh. Um, it is Buff Bagwell and his mom, because why not? Yeah. Versus well, it was, Judy. It was going to be Judge Judy Bagwell. I believe it was going to be Canyon and Tori Wilson, but tonight yeah. is also Tori Wilson Appreciation Night. Yeah, I guess so she's busy, so yeah. she said no, and she said Gators. But how, but how did she say? She's no? uh, she, find yeah. some other bimbo. <laughs> so like I'm a bimbo, but yeah, not you're not, not, gonna, not I, today. Yeah. This slut's got some self respect. Yeah, and uh, so instead, Canyon goes and finds old Pamela Poundshock, the backstage interviewee or interviewer. And um, so I said, hey, you're going to be my partner for whatever, you know, because I, I, I saw you first. So. She screams and yells no. Yeah. And he, he grabs her. Yeah. And drags her out, which if he wasn't gay, would straight just be a rape. It, was he gay or was he just doing it for attention? Who's to know? Mm, He's to got know. The lisp is legit. We should ask him. We should ask 
Chris Canyon if he's gay in 2018. <laughs> I'll ma- I'll place some calls. All right. Uh, what is that Twitter? <laughs> so I bet someone has a fake Canyon Twitter up right now. Probably. Uh, so the match is whatever. Um, a lot of swing and neck breakers. Okay, Canyon both received Receiving. and took. So apparently that answered your own question. Canyon's the switch. Uh, great swing and neck breakers. Yeah. Um, Going too soon. I'm trying to yeah, not really much going on in this match. There's a lot of bullshit with There's uh, like nothing with the women. Yeah, nothing with the women and just just kind of whatever. They, I guess the highlight or like the big, yeah, the big highlight of the match was that cuz I think like was it last week uh, Canyon gave he was going to give Palm of Pound Shock the <laughs> the diamond cutter, but then yeah. Mean Gene Mean Gene intervened and then Canyon gave him an off-screen diamond cutter. cutter. So Mean Gene comes running out wearing a neck brace, gets in Canyon's face and then kicks him in the balls, then he Takes the blockbuster and the end. Yeah. And that was pretty much... What are you giggling about? What have you found here? Oh, all the terrible things. Uh-oh. Have you found... Is is there a fake Canyon Twitter? No, Chris Canyon had a real Twitter account. Oh, boy. <laughs> what if the last tweets he made oh, before no, he died? No, 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 no. <sighs> I am involved with four major projects. Two with pro wrestling, one with MMA, and, and one, one with killing myself, and, and one having nothing to do with wrestling. But I'm very excited about in all caps. Well, couldn't have been that excited because you died less than three months. I don't later. know. Maybe uh, apparently that project took priority. Oh boy. He still has sixty three followers. Sixty three. I don't know. People that clearly don't use their Twitter and never unfollowed a dead oh, man. Like. You know what would be what would be a really awful thing to do as a human being? Go on. Is create your create a new Twitter account uh-huh. and only follow dead, dead wrestlers. Pe- Ooh, I like Ooh. that. That's all you do. So your feed would never be full, and it would just say following blank. And then if people looked at the people you were following, it was just dead wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> I like this gimmick. Uh, so from this match, we go into I guess why we had a match at the very beginning because it is a shoot. I guess interview. With Vince Russo. Yeah, so this was supposed to happen on this past Thunder, yes. yeah. which they, because they advertised this last Nitro, uh, and I guess whatever Vince said on Thunder wasn't allowed to be aired, so they tried again tonight, and so we cut to, like, earlier in the night, uh, Shivani and Russo in the box seats, and Shivani's like, all right, first question, the the one everyone wants to ask Vince Russo, what happened to Bash at the Beach? And Russo's like, well, let me tell you. I can't tell you. And then we're like, fuck this. And we fast forwarded like all 38 minutes Oh, it was it. so it long. It seemed long. It did. Because we were at like four times speed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eight, eight times. And it took a while. So, yeah. fuck that. Yeah. Uh, there's Vince Russo. Uh, shoot in quotation marks. Or three brackets, yeah. whatever, uh, interview, and we didn't watch it. Did yeah. you know that uh, the case between uh, Mr. Terrence Bollea and Vince Russo and WCW... Is ongoing? ...didn't end until 2005. Wow. Uh, that was when they settled. Five years. Five fucking years. Jesus. That's crazy. I like how Hogan's always in a lawsuit. Yeah. Yeah, because Hogan is Florida fucking trash. Yeah. He's literally one of the scummiest human beings that's ever lived, yeah. but everybody fucking worships the ground he walks yeah, on. But at the end of the day, he's still Florida trash. He's Florida trash. Yeah. His family's Florida trash. He's fucked uh, Ed Leslie in the butt a bunch of times. That's he's true. sold coke to people in the 70s and 80s. Tampa Bay Pipeline, baby. Yeah. Fucking piece of shit, Hulk Hogan. Also, the worst face of all time. Yes! <laughs> Cheated. How was he a face? Did nothing but cheat. Because fans yeah. are stupid, that's fans are why. fucking stupid. Wrestling fans and women. <laughs> uh, Jesus. We are associated with the Tom Likes program. <laughs> uh, so match number four, uh, again, another... This is this is the pipe on a pole match with uh, Sting versus Steiner. Great. Just, again, a whatever match. Like, it yeah. wasn't awful, but yeah, it was just... A few things. Just, it was they, they hit their spots, and that was kind of it. Yeah. It, it a weird... Cut, or not cut, but just how it was done, like the, 
there was an interference by Rick Steiner, but we didn't see it until Sting was jumping through the air to splash on him yeah, in that the was corner. Interesting, because we're like, he like he Stinger splashes Steiner in one corner. Yeah. And and up, up to this point we have only just seen, seen Steiner, Steiner Scott, Steiner Scott Steiner and Sting Steiner. wrestling. Yeah. And then we see Sting run to the office corner and we're like, oh, he's gonna go back and do another Stinger splash on, on Scott Steiner. And then he runs to the far corner and splashes Rick Steiner. We're like, that was amazing. Um but uh I then this is where the confusion of the rules kind of came in too, because uh, I guess Steiner grabbed the pipe because Rick had the had Rick a pipe. Rick grabbed the pipe, and then St- when he dropped it, when he got splash, Scott picked it up, and then like Sting's beating on Rick, and Scott's like stalking him from behind. But like the ref called for the bell, so I assume that once you get the pipe, you get the pipe, win. you win. That's the yeah. Match. yeah, yeah. So and then he just starts wailing. They start wailing on Sting, and then you know he hit uh, Nash's music hits and. He comes out with a chair. He runs. Yeah, runs. Which is scary. Because I think it, he's going to... It makes me very uncomfortable when Kevin Nash yeah. runs. I'm always worried about him. And which is weird because I hate him. Yeah. And um, it's, a, it's a chair and pipe battle between him and Steiner. Chair versus pipe. Yeah. And then they just eventually drop their weapons and then just start whacking each other. Yeah. And uh, the security comes in to separate them. And... Um, How about Kevin Gash and he's got a vagina? How about Kevin Men? He's just for men. Come on, Drew. Grow up. What about Pluto Nash? I like it. And what's his name? And, what's, and, his, uh, what's his thing? He lives on the moon. Okay. <laughs> the moon. I like it. That's what that movie's about, That is right? what that movie's about. Um, it has nothing to do with Pluto. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Pluto, the dog that is owned by another dog. Get out of here, He's Disney. owned by a mouse. He's owned by a mouse. Doesn't Goofy own him sometimes? No. All right. Goofy, Goofy is just a highly more evolved form of him. <laughs> Goofy, Goofy might not him. Ugh. And it's not, it's, and not, it's not bestiality. It's dog on dog. It's dog on dog. It's totally fine. There's nothing wrong just with Just because one can talk. And as Kelly can attest as being a dog, Who can sometimes talk? they establish dominance That's right. on other men by fucking them. Correct. So it's not bestiality. It's not, also, it's not even about sex. It's just about power. It's just about power. I Like, if you don't come, it's not gay sex. Yeah. I, I mean... Goofy, a hundred percent calm. Yeah, but, but that's beside the point. Yeah, I cannot deny the science. <laughs> now, now, if Pluto nodded Goofy, uh-huh. that might be in, in a little questionable. What do you mean? Because that might be bestiality. What are you talking about? Because you're letting a dog fuck you. If you're fucking a dog. Oh, so, okay. I was. If it was consensual or not. If it's non-consensual, it's whatever. Yes. It's, that's a regular dog rape. Yes. Dog, dog, dog rape. <laughs> and, and RDR. Is there a word and, and in the R- dog community for rape? And RDR. Huh? They call something. They call dog rape something else in the dog community? I don't know. Breakfast? Just... Off. <laughs> off. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah off. Yeah. Um... But if Goofy was into it, you think you think Goofy letting Pluto fuck him would be an issue? Yes. Hmm. Well, we're going to put this His... one out to the fans. Uh, give us a call at 591-ROCK, 591-ROLL, and uh, <laughs> I think that's a... That's a, that's a... Be two oh, numbers? Oh, also... No, those are both, either of those, because we have two oh, lines open for all the calls we're getting. Is one for yes, it is okay, and one's for no, it's not okay? <laughs> yeah, do, we might, do it that way. We might get a call from one Gregory from Tennessee. Is this uh Yeah, we, we could get a call from Gregory from Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I don't I, I hate it to add to this, but um, another weird thing is <laughs> you don't hate to add to this from the don't distance yourself from this television show Goof Troop. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Goofy and his son own a cat, mm-hmm. and and also his boss, his, his neighbor, Pete and neighbor is a cat. Is a cat. Yeah. Right. How does so, Pete feel? So Pete can fuck the cat, <laughs> but yeah. Goofy and Max can't. Yeah, agreed. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. But, I'm but it's more about how does Pete feel, feel about, about it. that? Yeah. Well, but how does Goofy feel about Mickey owning a dog? The same as Pete feels about Goofy owning a cat, right? But yeah, but weird. Like, but he's still gonna fuck it. Be, so like the dynamic is really fucked up because, like, does Goofy look at Pluto as being on the same status as him? Because they're both. That's dogs. the question. But. Because Goofy can talk and own a house and own a car and, and wear a pants. job and, and wear pants and, and wear pants and doesn't have to get that he walked. has to slowly yeah. unbuckle before he <laughs> and doesn't have to get walked and right. doesn't have to have his shit cleaned up after him. Correct. Well, his so, name is Goofy, so yeah, <laughs> but they're dogs. So are they on the same status level, or is is Pluto like a, a retard 
No, well, no, I think I think what it is, it's like it's like with us and chimps. Like how chimps sure. are like you know they're like they're like they're ninety nine percent are you know we are our, almost our right ancestors right. and what have you. Yeah, I think it's Common the same. Ancestor, yeah, yeah, I think it's the same with mm-hmm. that. That is interesting. Pluto might be retarded. I mean, he could be. Right, and, go- could, and and Goofy's cat might be retarded. He could. They could just be underdeveloped. He just didn't enough oxygen in the womb. In the world of <laughs> oxygen in the womb. In the world of Disney, the retarded are kept as pets. I can see that. Right. So that, that seems up that, Walt's does, alley. Does by the way, does that mean that Raja's retarded? So anyway, ma- match number five. Yeah. <laughs> so match number five is uh, six of it is closed. I believe How this... How dare you? I hit too close to home? Yes. <laughs> because you are a tiger who is on the spectrum? <laughs> yes. So in Disney, you would be a pet. Yes, me and Raja go to the same meetings. <laughs> we're, we're from the same group home. <laughs> uh... They're feeding you frozen mice? <laughs> <laughs> like in a fucking zoo? Yes. <laughs> match number five, which uh, possibly the best Nitro match. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Get, yeah. Like... Match alone, it's way up there, like easily top three. With the awesome heat, I yeah. think it's number one. Yeah. It's great. And it is, in fact, <laughs> Lance Storm versus Booker T. Um, yeah, I just wrote awesome for it. Cause Were, the whole what thing... was the uh, what was the belts on the line situation? Was it just it Booker's was title? It was just Booker's title. Yeah, it was just Booker's title. And, like, besides one hiccup on last, the... last week yeah. with... In terms of Lance Storm's booking, where Kevin Nash made him look like a fucking geek for no reason. Yeah. Lance Storm's booking in WCW has been perfect. Besides, like, the weird, like, immediate heel turn after debuting as a face. But, like, heel turn through this, fucking perfect. He wins the U.S. title tournament with three straight tap outs. Next week, wins the hardcore title. Next week, wins the cruiserweight right. title. Gets made to look like a bitch by Kevin Nash. <laughs> yeah. And and now challenges Booker for the world title. So, like, he's had, like, these four four weeks in a row. He has won a title. So he's on, like, the roll of all rules. He's beaten everyone with the Maple Leaf. And he gets Booker in the Maple Leaf in this match. The crowd fucking loses their minds, yeah. like, screaming for Booker to get out. Because, like, Booker's... Legit. USA chant. USA chant. Booker's very a very over face. Storm's a very over heel. Yeah. And, yeah, it works great. And then when Booker gets the ropes, first guy to, like, not tap to the maple leaf, it's yeah. huge. And then, uh, the finish. And then, yeah, so, like, Booker gets, like, a bunch of, like, straight near falls on Lance. He does, like, missile drop kick. An interesting looking missile drop kick. Yeah. And, like, Harlem sidekick and, and axe kick. Sidekick, yeah. And uh, that weird spine buster thing he does. The spine buster. Those look good. Though. Yeah, that was a big spine buster. And then he like went for the bookend, storm reverse, then quick rope running thing, and Booker does like a quick reversal back into the bookend, and fucking plants Lance Storm on his neck. Yeah. With a bookend, and it looked awesome, and beat him. Great match. Uh, Loved it. I was just doing some some back search, some, some research, some quick math. Well, I was just looking for what was the highest rated Observer WCW 2000 match, uh-huh. and just to see what it would give me as lists. That, match is, that match is not even in the top, like, what? whatever. But it, that's that's pay-per-view matches, right? No, it's, it's, got, it's got Raws, it's got, like... Uh, oh, no, sorry, not just WCW. Yeah, it's got everything, right? Oh, yeah. So, but like, it yeah, might, yeah, it might not even register. It's not, it doesn't register. Yeah. That's, I mean, maybe uh, we're not paying that much attention to Nitros, but, like, it was pretty fucking good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah. it, now that I think about it, I feel like that match, like on any of the like WWE, like the commercially released DVD sets and stuff, where they do like a WCW set, like a Nitro set or something, like the one two thousand Nitro match that's always on those sets is this match. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it uh, might be the only good match. It's probably the only good match. Uh, just real quick, not to get too, too off topic, but the, the top rated WCW match of the year two thousand. Goldberg Steiner. Goldberg Steiner. Gotta be. Yeah. Gotta be like the only four star match. Four and a quarter. Yeah. Um, oh, and I forgot during this, like after the match, Jeff Jarrett comes out and he like starts beating up Booker T and hitting him in the knee and stuff like that. And I and we forgot to mention that uh, Mike Awesome and his uh, one of his fat ladies are Heidi, Heidi or at, Mighty Heidi, Mighty Heidi, are at ringside and then uh, they're about to leave. Who had a dirt mid match, which somehow didn't 
ruin the match. Yeah. Uh, Mid match had a large tray of what they said were ham oh, sandwiches yeah. delivered, even yeah. though they were clearly roast beef. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. And uh, come on. So Lance then gets mad at J- uh, Jarrett for uh, breaking his flag. So he yeah. goes after him, and Jarrett throws him in the guardrail, grabs a guitar to go to slam, like hit him with it. Lance moves, and Heidi gets in the way, and fucking Jarrett kills Blasted. her. Blasted! Fucking murders her. <laughs> and so good. And then Jarrett's second uh, consecutive yeah. uh, woman murder yeah. on two nitros. Yeah. And uh, spousal abuse, Jeff Jarrett. Yeah. So Mike Austin. Someone else spouse. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Austin not happy with that. Chases him, but doesn't check on his lady. Doesn't check She's on her. expendable. Yeah. And then he can uh, go into the crowd and get six more Heidi's. Yeah. And then I uh, run. Jarrett runs the ring and then gets beat up by Booker T. And yep. that's, uh Now it's gonna be. And then it co- it goes to commercial. Comes back and it's uh, uh, Jarrett talking to Pound Shock and he's saying how Mike Austin was blah, 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 what have you and then he's. Getting in his way, and so he's gonna wrestle him later tonight. I guess. Yeah. Like, I, I guess is the. I kind of shut off during that <laughs> thing because I hate it when Jeff Jarrett talks. Yeah, um, he's bad. Uh, Calling a woman a slap nut. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there, which, which which caused Drew to question, what is a slap nut? Yeah. Is it just the masturbator? In which case, yeah. Slap nuts, present like, and accounted for. You're going up and down, and you're slapping, slapping your, your nut when you're coming down. Yeah, so I guess. that, that must right. be what it means. You're just yeah. a masturbator. Well, you know what? Uh, Guilty as charged. Color me masturbating. Color me bad at masturbating. You're bad at masturbating, but like early '90s bad. That means good. You know what I'm talking about? Sure. Hmm. This was uh, 2000s though, so yeah. But I'm still in the early '90s. Ah, uh, when you were in your 30s. When I was in my early to mid 30s. Yeah. Uh, from there, if this is a, fuck, another <laughs> dumb segment where it's... Uh, is this one... Is There's one where you just wrote bad or something, right? Uh, that was for a match. That's later? Uh, actually, that, I think that was from actually a couple of shows ago that okay. I did that. But um, this is... I know you just wrote bad for the, the Muda match that you, that, yeah. the, the, on the last one you did. Yeah. Um, it's fucking Kidman coming out, trying to be all apologetic to Tori Wilson because he showed the sex tape. And... Um, however many weeks ago that was, two weeks ago or whatever. Like, it's so clearly a swerve. Yeah, and then uh, she comes out. He's going to do something mean. Gives her flowers. Even though he's a face. Yeah, but gives, being mean to women is funny. Yeah, gives her flowers and stuff, and then, like, shows a tape of her 16th birthday where it's, like, been filmed that year. And, yeah. And uh, it's, like, not even her. It's, like, some weird chick that's, like, when she gets presented the cake, starts just digging in and eating the cake. and like Is she in a fat suit, or is it... I think it's prosthetics. Yeah. I think yeah. she's got fat face prosthetics. Yeah. yeah. And then she's just being like, uh, uh, just being a glutton and yeah, eating like all this garbage. Shoving the cake in her face before the candles are blown out, then yeah. drinking from the punch bowl, and leaning over to drink from the punch bowl, and just putting her tits in the lit, lit candles, candles on the cake. But, like, nothing happened. So she, yeah. like, I guess the joke was, yeah, there was no she, was, she had, like, fire retardant tits. And, um, she might. They're pretty fucking it, big. Maybe fire retarded tits. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they're so retarded they fire into the spectrum. Hey, they say she's retarded, but them titties ain't retarded. <laughs> oh, <that's gross. laughs> ring, ring. Hello? <laughs> if she laughs, I know she's retarded and I'm in. <laughs> was that all I said? Oh, yeah, and then there was, um, he he just had a bunch of flyers come down from the rant. There the, were pictures of her high school, school. yearbook yeah. or something. And she was really, they like, were very badly in 2000s Photoshop. 2000 Photoshop, yeah. yeah. And it's like... Who, and yeah, you were like... Who gives... You look like... Look what you look like now. You're who super hot now. You're fucking yeah. rocking now. Yeah. yeah. Like, you're the hottest, second hottest girl in the whole company. Yeah. yeah. Like, who gives a shit? Yeah, you're you're my waifu if Stacey Keebler didn't exist. Yeah. Who and, is flawless? Who is flawless? And, uh... Then, uh, yeah, and then fucking, uh, Reno? Yeah. Reno comes Reno. out. Reno, 9 Beats one, him up, two. as Reno, does... Reno, nine eleven. As does, uh, Shane Douglas, and, uh, that's kind of all that was. Yeah, so I get Reno debuted on Thunder. Reno was an inside yeah. job. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, the story is that because last show when we saw Kidman trying to fuck all the Nitro girls, uh, apparently Reno is the boyfriend of one of them. Yeah. And whatever happened, Reno didn't take, uh... Kindly. He was so mad, he debuted at wrestling. <laughs> and Just gave, like Queewee. Yeah. And gave Kidman a roll of the dice, which is a pretty cool move, and he does well. Yeah. So, great. And uh, from there, we go to the filthy animals uh, trying to make their escape with the belts. And they're, like, in the car, and they're like, yeah, you're going to drive away. And then uh, Hoovy and uh, Ray are opening up the 
garage door. And as they're doing it, you can see some people standing behind the door. And when they come up, they're, oh, it's chronic. And they got sledgehammers. And shirts. And shirts. <laughs> and they're uh, smacking them around. They're hitting the car with uh, sledgehammers and discos in there. And he's like, oh, he gets out. He's like, okay, I'll give you the belts. Just leave me alone. So they take the belts. They end up giving Disco a high times on the hood of the car. I, the reason I asked earlier, or I mentioned earlier, that there was no payoff to the, like, filthy animals and missing belts thing, I somehow blacked out on this entire segment except for the high times on the hood. Hmm. Like, that's where I came back. I, feel, I don't know what happened. I feel like also at some point during the show that we, might, we didn't mention was the MIA... Uh, having a troop meeting right. oh, where yeah. General General Erection tells them that they need to get the belts back and give them back to Chronic. Yeah. So he splits up the team. Him and the wall go one way and the other fuckers go the other way. Yeah. Um, and then obviously that's not paid off because Chronic gets their fucking belts back by themselves. Uh, yeah. 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 And, Correct. <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is for that one. Uh, from there, uh, it's the women just rolling around in the mud. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty much self-explanatory. Major Guns drags Tigress out, throws her in the mud. Stacy comes out, throws Major Guns in the mud, and then tells her that she's a fucking bitch. Yeah. If there's no grass on the field, go play in the mud. Yep. And uh, sure. from there we go to... Ugh, this feels like it's longer than it actually was. <laughs> um, goes to match six, which is... Uh, match six? Yeah, match six. Which is uh, Jeff Jarrett versus Awesome, which I just wrote down, whatever. Cause no, it was, no, I knew you had a, a yeah. one word. I don't, I don't whatever. remember anything about this match, and we literally just watched it like yeah. not even an hour ago. It, yeah. yeah, it was just us, whatever. And like, did it end with interference? I'm trying to remember. Uh... Uh, Storm got on the apron That's right. and got knocked through a table. That yeah. didn't break. That didn't break. It was break. a Japanese table. Yeah. And then that led to the distraction of Jarrett doing the uh, stroke, which is like oh, a terrible Oh, be- before, before the Storm table spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, There's a distraction. Jarrett takes out Brass Knuckles. No, he, rip- oh. he rips the chain off of Mike Lawson's oh, the chain. neck. Yeah. Wraps, wraps the around chain around. Fist, pops awesome. Puts in his trunks. Two count. Two count. What was Because inter- interference isn't, isn't a finish anymore. Yeah. yeah, cheating is a two count now. Yep. And, uh, that's pretty... And we decided that the stroke sucks. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fucking bad. It's a dumb move. And, uh... Yeah, that's kind of all there was for that match. And then from there we go to the main event, which is the Steiners versus Nash and Sting. Again, another one-word review, which is just meh. Meh. <laughs> like, eh. What do we got? The only thing good about this was that it feels like the Steiners sometimes don't know what they're doing until they're doing, doing it. it? Yeah. yeah. Because Rick grabs Sting like he was going to give him an overhead it, belly It belly. so clearly looked like the setup for an overhead belly And then belly as belly. he lifted him, I don't know if it was just that, like... Sting's jump? Sting didn't or... jump, or he just didn't get enough... Like, like all right, we're going sideways. He on it or something, and he's like, oh, this is just a regular belly to belly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, to the side, yeah. Yeah, it was just, um, normal, like, regular whatever, and, like, Nash didn't really do anything. No, he match. did run again he once. Run. He ran again, and oh, He ran, like, so around the... He's too big outside to run. The ring to, he's yeah, too big too to big. run. Um... I can remember him giving Rick Steiner a jackknife on the on the announce table that didn't break. Also didn't and they just, yeah, it was a real Japanese like, table kind of thing. They cut to it just as he was putting him down. So like, yeah, it we wasn't, barely saw yeah. anything. Yeah, um, and R- Rick Steiner and Scott Steiner. How about Thick Steiner and Hot Steiner? Am I right? Who's with me? No, no. no. Rick was thick though. Rick, Rick wasn't. Rick was just wearing bikers and not a singlet. He had a shirt. Yeah, but, but then the shirt came off, off mid match and looked. Kind really of fat. fat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like real chum. Like, there's a reason he wore a singlet his whole career. Like, yes. Yeah. S- stick with what got you here. Right? But, like, he also wore the really low cut singlet, like, down where his gut he is. He did. And that's like, yeah. that doesn't help. It was a real all... awesome Kong situation. Yeah, almost, almost a porn singlet. Um, but not quite. And then, uh, so, as that's going on the outside, Goldberg runs in. This is, like, he's not been around the entire show. Except for they that even mentioned part. in commentary that he wasn't there tonight. Yeah, even, even though, though we, we saw, saw him, him arrive. earlier. Yeah. And he comes running in, and he, because I guess Steiner had, oh, Steiner had Sting in the um, Steiner recliner, and then he comes in, punches Scott Steiner, Scott Steiner falls down, Sting falls on top of him, one, two, three. Yeah. From a punch. Yeah. And that was weird. We finish. weren't really expecting and that. And they're like, oh, so is Goldberg a face now? And then he just, like, then kicks, he kicks Sting, Sting, and then, that, and then, and then him and Nash, Nash gets, stare down. And literally, like, Nash jumps on him, and then Steiner's back up, and he yeah. shouldn't get in, as, as he's getting in. Good night, everybody. Yeah, we classic, gotta go. Classic we're WCW. We're at a time. We're at a time. Yeah. And then security will come and break them apart like they do every fucking show. Yeah. yeah. So this is the uh, Go Home broadcast. Uh, six days from now, we've got the New Blood Rising pay-per-view in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada from the Pacific Coliseum. 
which seats about 10,000. I imagine there's about four there for this show. <laughs> We're going, right? We're going. Uh, we'll be there live. Next week is August 14th, 2000 Nitro, coming to you from Kelowna, British Columbia. Not as beautiful which, as Vancouver. Which I believe a uh, friend of the show, <laughs> Daniel, was at. And uh, wants to be on that podcast, so uh, we're going to have to find out uh, if he's still fired or not. And they also, do they do a Thunder from Kelowna, I feel like? Yeah, if not Kelowna, then Kamloops or something. It it was Kamloops, because I remember being in Kamloops and, like, for a baseball tournament my dad was at, and, like, in the hotel watching the Thunder from Kamloops. Oh, interesting. Yeah. like that. It's almost like being there. Yeah. But with the you probably had more fun not being there yeah. But with the man. advantage of not being trapped at a WCW show in 2000, so you probably made the right choice because you could uh, change the channel anytime you want. Um, yeah. So I think that does it for this week. Uh, you should uh, you should listen next week or or not or, uh, or eat your dick. And also, don't forget to um, tell us what your thoughts are on whether or not Goofy getting fucked by Pluto is good. Yeah, or bad. that's really the takeaway. That is from the whole this. point to this episode. So please, please give us a call at uh, five nine one rock or five nine one roll. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye. And, <laughs> and I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out, Drew. Don't you ever fucking call Roger retarded again. <laughs>